So, hello, I'm Sarah Gardner. Uh, I'm a graduate student at UC Riverside, but today I'm going to talk to you about some of my master's work that literally got accepted to publication this morning. Um, <laughs> All right, let's jump in. Okay, so organisms across multiple tasks that engage in behaviors, including this lovely lady that you're seeing right here. Um, but a lot of these behaviors really impact offspring uh, phenotypes. So things about early survival down to uh, you know, their overall fitness. Um, and in rodents in particular, levels of maternal behavior have been shown to impact offspring behavioral phenotypes. So for example, if a female provides less care to her offspring, those offspring in turn show increased anxiety-like phenotypes, um, and as well are not as good uh, parents to their own offspring. So I think it's safe to say we know a fair amount about how mothers can impact their offspring, but maybe what's less talked about is how offspring can turn around and impact their mothers. So at least in mammals, these interactions are mediated through the placenta. So I'm gonna give you all a quick crash course on what you need to know about the placenta for myself. Um, so placenta are of offspring origin. So what I mean by that, other than a really thin layer of maternal tissue, that placenta has the same genotype as a developing embryo. Um, and also, the placenta acts as a temporary endocrine organ, so it's producing hormones uh, that target the maternal brain that trigger a change in her physiology, her metabolism, and even her behavior. Um, and importantly, uh, a subgroup of these hormones in rodents called placental lactogens uh, target the maternal brain to prime her to be ready to act maternal the second those pups are born. Um, to bring it back to being reciprocal, uh, her offspring receive a really big benefit for her being ready to act maternal once her pups are born. And then lastly, um, this is a little bit off topic, but uh, imprinted genes are highly expressed in the placenta. So imprinted genes are parent of origin specific. So only either the paternally inherited allele or the maternally uh, inherited allele are expressed for a given gene for these imprinted genes. Um, and like I said, they're highly expressed in the placenta, and in particular, in the placental endocrine cells. So those cells that are producing those hormones that trigger all of these cascading things that lead to this great offspring benefit. So that leads me to our study species. So in our lab, we use crosses uh, set up between Mus musculus domesticus, so the house mouse, and Muspretus, the Algerian mouse, um, and they produce these startling little hybrids. Um, that show a uh, misexpression of imprinted genes in the placenta um, and also in the hybrid brain. That's not what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so in particular, uh, others in my lab have looked at what genes are misexpressed in these hybrid placenta. Um, and two that I'm going to point out in particular, filled two and ASCL2, are uh, expressed in the endocrine compartment. Um, and an important <coughs> note that I didn't say about these hybrids is that in the direction of the cross that we're looking at, the hybrids are undersized. Um, and so also the placenta is undersized and also the endocrine compartment is undersized. And then not in printed genes, but still important, placental lactogens are also misexpressed in the hybrid placenta and they are underexpressed. So all this together is pretty strong evidence for some sort of placental dysregulation happening in this cross. So that brings me to my question. Do females that are exposed to this hybrid placenta differ in maternal behaviors compared to the females that are producing conspecific offspring. And based on the fact uh, of, all these of all of the evidence um, that we've seen that there's placental dysregulation in this cross, we expect to see that there is some sort of altered maternal care in the females that are producing hybrids compared to those who are producing conspecific offspring. Okay. And to do this, we set up two experimental crosses. Um, domesticus females, denoted as Dom up here, um, were either paired to a male domesticus um, and produced conspecific offspring, or they were paired to a male spreadus, uh, due to the spread up here, and produced hybrids. So regardless of what kind of offspring they were producing, we kind of subjected them to four behavioral tests. Um, before they uh, gave birth, we wanted to see if there was an increased anxiety phenotype in the mothers, so we uh, put them through an open field test. And then after the pups were born, they uh, participated in a uh, pup retrieval test, uh, suckling a milk bud down to see how much milk the females were producing and then how much their pups were eating. Um, and lastly, daily time in and out of the nest uh, using an activity monitor placed on top of the cage. Um, and these were done 
Uh, pup retrieval is done on the first day the pups were born. Suckling and milk down was taken uh, on day five after the pups were born, and daily time in and out of the nest was done over the first four days postpartum. So when maternal behaviors are usually at their highest, um, as these little guys are altricial and can't really take care of themselves very well without the mothers. All right, so I'm gonna uh, present the data for these chronologically, so from pregnancy then through days postpartum. And for all of the graphs that you're gonna see, uh, any of the data with hybrids, uh, be it the pups or the mothers of the hybrids, are in blue and uh, red for con specific. Okay. So first up is the open field test. Um, and I'm only showing you two metrics uh, we measure for this, uh, time in the center and weight so you to enter the center of the arena. Uh, so these are just open grids um, that pla uh, place the females in to see if they show any anxiety-like behaviors. Um, so my surprise species, if they're out in the open, they have a pretty good chance of something coming along and eating it. So they typically try to stay around oops, these outer edges. If this, it, in this open space. So um, an increased or uh, no, a decreased anxiety-like behavior would be spending more time in the nest and getting in there, uh, or not in the nest, in the center, sorry, uh, and getting in there faster. Okay, so first for time in the nest, uh, center, not the nest, I'm really excited about nest. Um, <laughs> As females of uh, pregnant with hybrid offspring are getting closer to parturition, they're spending more time in the center of this arena, um, which is indicative of less anxiety like behavior. But conversely, uh, for latency to enter the center, they're pretty static as uh, they're getting closer to parturition, um, but are still consistently higher. So they're uh, spending, or they're taking longer to enter into the center of the arena but they're spending more time there. So it's a bit of a mixed bag. All right, and then once the pups are involved. <laughs> um, so pup retrieval, just real fast, is uh, exactly what it sounds like. I took three pups and took them out of the nest and then waited to see how long it took for moms to retrieve them. Um, so uh, for all of uh, their pups, mothers of hybrid offspring took longer to retrieve. So next up is home cage activity. So um, we use activity kind of as a proxy for time in and out of the nest because if they're more active outside of the nest, the monitor's picking that up. So they're out of the nest then. Um, but decreased activity is indicative of more time in the nest. Okay. Um, so what we found was that on this first night, oh, also, I'm only showing you dark cycle activity because mice are nocturnal, and uh, so they're more active in the dark cycle anyway. Um, but mothers are kind of expected to not be as active because they're spending time with spending time with their pups. Um, so on this first night, we see that mothers of hybrid offspring are actually more active or are spending more time out of the nest compared to mothers of conspecific offspring. But this goes away pretty quickly after that first night. All right, and lastly is the suckling milk letdown assay. So for each of these six time points, uh, we weigh each mother and then all their pups individually. Um, so what this test is doing, we take the pups out of the nest for two hours to see how much milk the mother is producing, and then uh, put them back in the nest and then see how much they're eating over four hours. All right, so I'm gonna show you mother and pup data uh, separately. First off, mothers, if that's what we're interested in. Um, and as you can see with these two lines, they're the same. They did not differ between the two groups. Um, they're gaining weight when they're separated from their pups and when their pups are eating, so they're losing weight. Um, the pups were not also that different um, other than at this one time point. So it looks like uh, hybrid pups are actually losing less weight than their <coughs> uh, counterparts. Um, but we're not really sure if that means anything. <laughs> All right, so just in summary, Back to the question, do females exposed to hybrid placenta differ in maternal behaviors compared to females that produce conspecific offspring? Yes, we have some evidence that that is the case. But more specifically, going back through uh, what we're looking at, um, did they show increased anxiety-like behaviors prepartum? Yes and no, <laughs> they're a bit contradictory. Um, but I think the important point here with, even if they are different, um, the females that are pregnant with hybrids are acting differently than the females that are, are carrying conspecific offspring. So there is some sort of effect. 
Um, but we did see longer latencies to retrieve pups and less time spent in the nest on the first night. So both of these metrics were taken on the first day that the pups were born, which is really, really critical to their survival that they're not spending too much time out of the nest, so they can't thermoregulate, so the longer that they're outside of the nest, they're increasing a risk of hypothermia, and then again, maybe a predator can come across them and snatch them up pretty quickly. Um, and same with uh, time spent out of the nest, the mothers aren't there to keep them warm, or to keep them And again, we didn't see a difference in the letdown. So what do we think this means? Um, I'll remind you that we do uh, have a lot of evidence for placental dysregulation uh, during pregnancy. So this placental dysregulation is probably leading to altered signaling that uh, primes those maternal behaviors. So this altered signaling could probably lead to these early uh, maternal behaviors kind of deficits in early maternal behaviors, but constant exposure to those pups over the first couple of days really removes that effect. So by day five, mothers have more or less become sensitized to their pups. And even in virgin rodents, it's been shown that if you constantly expose a female to pups, eventually she'll start acting maternal. So these females are still getting some hormones and likely this effect goes away pretty quickly. However, like I was mentioning before in the beginning, um, any sort of deficit could still really impact offspring in the long run. So despite the fact that this effect goes away eventually, the fact that that early time was not as great as it should have been, basically, this could still have a long-term impact on offspring, which we would like to uncover in the future. Um, and also in the future, we need to look uh, a little bit further at the direct mechanism uh, and see if, uh, while the central lactogens are underexpressed, to see if they're actually not being all right. With that, I just want to thank my committee at Oklahoma State, other members of the lab, people who've heard me complain about mice being jerks a lot, and of course the mice and our family.